In America, in Canada, New Zealand, in my own home country, Australia, the dispossession of native peoples still widely discussed in terms of um, not only being a terrible thing, but sometimes there's the hint that it was genocidal, that there was the intent uh, to wipe out a people. Does a proper reading of the historical uh, record support such a contention, that there was somehow a premeditated intention to do away with people on the basis of race? Uh, in my view, no. I mean, the, the, as you well know, uh, the, um, the classic alleged example of genocide was what happened in Tasmania in the 1830s and 40s. Um, the, art, the Australian art critic Robert Hughes said that was, the, that was kind of the, the one um, um, infamous example of genocide within, within the British Empire. This, of course, is highly controversial. Um, uh, but my view that what, what happened in Tasmania is not fairly described as genocide is shared by Australian historians such as Henry Reynolds and Dirk Moses, uh, who rightly, I think, uh, certainly Reynolds rightly says that we, we need to define genocide uh, as international law defines it, namely as a, a, an intentional and systematic attempt to exterminate a people. I mean, the paradigm of genocide is, of course, Hitler's final solution. You know, very deliberate, uh, state-sponsored, uh, 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 state-organized, and very systematic. That's the paradigm. And nothing like that happened in, in Tasmania, nor anywhere else in the British Empire. That's not to say that there weren't settlers uh, who were so hostile to native peoples that when they encountered them, they tried to kill as many as they could. Um, but from my reading of Australian, New Zealand, um, African and North American history, uh, colonial government uh, never sought to perpetrate genocide. And on the contrary, uh, colonial government strove to moderate the impact of settlers on natives, particularly in the 1800s, after there'd been this kind of moral revolution in England. And again, even Jehovah's Christianity was, was a major force here. Colonial government tried to moderate the impact of settlers on, on natives and uh, strove to, to, to restrain violence um, and to, to restrain settler violence. Um, so there was, there was no uh, systematic state-sponsored attempt at uh, exterminating a people, although uh, peoples were sometimes annihilated um, almost invariably by, by disease. So the, the Beotuk people of Newfoundland in, in what's now Canada in the 1700s disappeared through a combination of disease, uh, warfare with other tribes, um, and the impact of Europeans. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't deliberate. It's an important distinction to make, I think, between uh, the actions of individuals and what was sanctioned by the state and what was not. Yes. So I think of a horrendous massacre that happened not far from where I live. Uh, and it was undertaken by a group of highly irresponsible and very nasty stockmen. Yes. The state apparatus, if I can put it that way, slowly and in a pretty creaking way, nonetheless, actually insisted on justice. Yes. And nine perpetrators out of 11 people involved, white men, were hung for what they had done uh, quite early on. So the state, in a sense, yes. often not as effectively as it might have, but it did seek, in that case, yes. to insist on justice, to recognise that a white man, and this is the language that was sort of being used at the time, who murdered a black man should hang for it. Yes. So I think there's a, isn't there a, a cartoon that Governor Arthur had put about, w w which was explaining in, in cartoon form to, to Aboriginal people that, that um, there will be equal justice, that if a white man kills an Aborigine, yes. they, they, will, right. they too will be That's hanged. correct. Yeah. But just, just on that, uh, um, my, my perception is that in Australia and elsewhere, um, if there was something to criticise about colonial government, it was, it was too weak. Uh, it wasn't powerful enough to control what was going yeah. on. 
but but then I think we need to remember that um, government in in early nineteenth century Britain was small and weak. Uh, so so when you've got famine in Ireland just across the, across the Irish Sea, part of the problem is that the the government doesn't have the resources uh, to to deal with that problem adequately. Um, and just in, in terms of personnel, I think around even as late as the 1880s in Canada, um, you have 1,000 Royal Canadian Mounted Police patrolling um, the whole of, of Canada. 1,000 men. Uh, this vast territory. Um, so, so, and I suspect in Australia it was the same story, that there simply weren't the government didn't have the personnel, the army, the police, uh, sufficient to, to control what was going on in the frontiers, but they did their best.